This week, along with around 80,000 people from the global aviation industry, I should have been in Farnborough for the famous air show that's held there every two years and has been since 1948. I've been going since 1988. But not this year. In March, the show had to be cancelled due to the COVID pandemic. The organisers have put together a good programme of online events to keep the industry connected and aviation reporters busy. But of course, it's not the same as the real thing. And one of the aspects of it that you miss the most is the daily flying display. The roar of the military jets gets your pulse going, but what makes a bigger impression on me is getting close to the airliners that we tend to take for granted as we pass through airports. Wide bodies like the Airbus A350, the A380, and the rival Boeing 787 Dreamliner to me seem so graceful on the air show circuit when they aren't rushing to get us from A to B and back again. At a show like Farnborough, you can get close enough to count the rivets, or at least see where the rivets used to be on these now largely composite airframes. You also get to see the latest engines, such as the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 turbofans that power the A330neo. Seeing the A380 again from its appearance at the 2018 show is poignant now that we know Airbus is going to stop production in 2021. The double-decker design was hailed as a breakthrough in expanding route capacity when the program was launched back in 2000. It can carry up to around 555 people in different classes of seating. One proposed variant that never saw the light of day would have been able to carry as many as 960 passengers, all in coach class. No thanks. These airliners come in all shapes and sizes, and from all over the world. For instance, I first saw Japan's Mitsubishi regional jet at the Farnborough show. These days it's called the Space Jet, and it's still working its way through a torturously long path to type certification. For several years, I enjoyed watching an aircraft called the C-Series, admiring its pragmatic design. But now, since Bombardier sold the program, and that part of its business, to Airbus, it's known as the A220. In the wake of COVID, the defense side of the aviation business is looking better financially than the civil side. Farnborough would once again have been packed with military hardware this year, as mounting global tensions bolster the case for ever more advanced defense capability. Fighters like Boeing's F-A-18 Hornet, the Saab Gripen, and the Lockheed Martin F-35 are truly awe-inspiring in the shock and awe sense of the term. You don't just see them in flying displays, you feel them as the boom from their engines makes your intestines shake. But you also get to see the breadth of military aircraft capability with multi-role types as the Alenia Air Marquis M346, the Boeing P-8 Poseidon, the Airbus A400M, the Leonardo AW159 helicopter, the Embraer KC-390, the Lockheed Martin LM-100J, and Antonov's AN-178. And then, once in a while, an old dog will have his day in the sun at Farnborough. Such as when this venerable Boeing 727 showed us its new role in dealing with oil spillages. Being an old airshow dog myself, I enjoyed seeing that. Anyway, I am reliably informed that the Farnborough International Airshow will be back in all its glory in 2022. So keep the faith, as they say, and happy landings. 
Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.